Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma Fave, and today we are on our last part of our watercolor drill series and we are focusing all on layering. So let's jump right in. Okay, so today we are finishing up our watercolor drill series with layering, also sometimes known as glazing or wet on dry. So everything here is dry. This is how you achieve details um, and nice sharp lines. This is, this is how you do it. So we're gonna just hop right in. Here I have three circles, so I'm just gonna show you some techniques with wet on dry um, and what I use layering for. So sometimes, um, when I'm painting, I will try and go back in and add shadows and depth and stuff like that, but my paper is already dry, so I will layer on some darker shadows. Now, remember with Wet on Wet, when we go back in to tap darker areas, it, you'll get a really nice like blended gradient without harsh lines. Now, because we are layering, you're going to get harsh lines, but I'm going to show you how to blend it out. Okay, so let's start with this circle. I'm going to grab the same pink that I used, maybe a bit more pigment, and I'm just going to start adding that dark shade, okay? So say I'm trying to shade this. Now you see wet on dry, you get this sharp, sharp line. I'm just going to show you how to blend it out. So I wash off my brush completely. My water is really dirty. Dry it on my paper towel, and you got to kind of act quickly, and you're just going to blend that line out. Okay, wash off your brush again, dry it on your paper towel, blend it out. And that's how you can add shadows with layering right on top. Okay, you can continue to go back in and make it a little bit darker. But that's how you achieve it going wet on dry. You're just washing off your brush, drying it on your paper towel, and blend, blending it out. And sometimes you'll get even deeper, um, more vibrant shadows just by doing it on a dry surface instead of doing the wet on wet. So that's one way I like to use it. Um, another way that I like to use layering, um, especially with animals and stuff, is like doing fur. So I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna grab some green here. This is where the detail and texture can come in. So this is dry and you can just add, practice adding in little strokes like this was some sort of animal, a green ball animal, <laughs> okay? Practice little strokes. Another thing I like to do um, with wet on dry is dry brushing. So it's almost kind of like dry on dry. I'll dry off my brush and I'll just kind of like dab it in my color like this, dab it on my paper or dab on my paper towel and then dry brush. So it's almost like dry on dry and this is another way to layer some texture. You can get a lot of great textures with wet on dry and layering. Okay, so this is just something, yes, the bristles look like it's like you're damaging your brush. In my experience, I haven't damaged a brush yet from doing this. Okay, try not to be like too, too rough with it. But yeah, you can definitely do that. Get some dry brush action. And then once you're done, obviously make sure don't leave it like this. Wash off your brush, run it against the side, dry it on your paper towel, hang it upside down, <laughs> hang it upside down to dry and it's right back to the way it used to be um you won't damage your brush but yeah so you can practice two different types of fur just using really light pressure and little short strokes or you can do the dry brush to get some techniques and then the last way is kind of like it's called glazing um basically you're taking a really light wash of another color um, which is going to make it transparent and you can achieve another color and that's also how you can do kind of like shadows and stuff too so you can also achieve layering different colors so this is blue let's uh let's grab yellow I don't know a really light wash of yellow and you can just kind of layer it on top make it nice and light and achieve two different layers or two different um colors just by layering, so you can practice that too, okay? 
Okay, so another thing that I love and what I use layering for, one of my most popular videos actually was layered flowers and it gives it this really cool kind of transparent look. Um, so what we're gonna do, so I, I did some petals here and as you can see, the petals are not touching each other and that's key because the petals that are gonna be touching these petals are gonna go over top and it's gonna look like they're transparent. Um, and this is a really fun technique and it ends up being really, really cool, almost like x-ray flowers. And even to make them more see-through, you can do a, a really light wash of these first colors. I did kind of like a medium tone or a medium value, but I'm just gonna show you. So I have a light wash of pink, just more water than pigment. And I'm gonna do another petal overlapping these two. Okay, it's a light wash so you can see right through it, but it gives this like transparent look. And if you want to add a little bit more kind of like refined um, edges, you can just take a bit more pigment and just tap in the edges a bit, maybe like the base, just around the edges. And you get these beautiful flowers. Okay, I'm gonna do another one. It's kind of easier when you do um, uh, lighter, well, no, actually, I was going to say lighter first rounds of petals. This is kind of dark, but essentially once you layer, you're going to get a darker value no matter what because you're adding another layer of paint. I don't know if anything, what I just said made sense, but it's okay. You'll see once this dries how cool this looks. Okay, I'm just going up with a little bit more pigment, like a tiny bit more pigment just around the edges. And you get this amazing layered look. Okay, let's do it again here. Let's change up the color though. Um, let's, let's add pink. Okay. And again, you can get that kind of glazing, like using two different color looks by using another color. It just looks awesome. That's a really fun layered look or way to use layering. Okay, let's do one more petal, maybe falling down this way. Okay, and it looks so cool. I love the way those ones look. Add a little bit more pigment. And then I'm gonna show you another little trick with these once they're dry, another little thing you can add to layering. Um, and then you can always just do your little stem. You can even layer leaves if you wanted to going down the stem. I'm not going to right now. But have your stem coming. It can bleed into some of those little white, not white, wet areas if you want them to, that you don't have to, you can wait for them to dry. But yeah, so that's like layering flowers, which is so much fun to do. Um, these are how I use layering for landscapes. I kind of showed you this one in our last wet on wet video. Um, but I'm going to show you again. So we did our wet on wet. If you didn't see it, go back to that video first and watch, um, because I used wet on wet to get these kind of misty clouds that are not clouds, <laughs> trees that are out of focus. And then I like to go back in and do another layer wet on dry so you get these sharper trees that are in focus and it looks like they are in the foreground. You can also do this with clouds too. make sharper clouds. You could do the wet on wet. So more clouds in the distance and then you could do sharper clouds kind of like in the foreground if you wanted to. Totally up to you, but this really adds something to your piece when you have those out of focus ones in the background and then you have the sharper ones in the foreground. Just using the tip of your brush, always do the vertical line down first and then I'm just like sketching kind of like with the tip of my brush and light pressure these kind of random branchy shapes. So I always start with like kind of like a V going up for my trees and then I start to slowly move them down, okay? And then if you wanted to, you could do even darker trees, another layer on top of this layer, like make these trees that are sharp um, a bit lighter of this color. I'm using Payne's Gray, 
And then when you let this completely dry, do another layer. So layer another row of trees that are slightly darker and it just gives your paintings a lot of dimension. Okay. You just do it all the way across. I think I have a tutorial on like this painting. Exactly. Okay. And then another way I like to use my wet on dry layering is for mountains, which I've actually done a few of those videos as well. Let's make sure you guys are in frame. So I'll just use paints gray again. I'm going to take a really light wash of it and I'm going to do a mountain. Hold on. Like this. And you can kind of see that yellow through the mountain, which kind of makes it look like the the sunset is hitting those mountains in the background okay now i'm going to show you how to layer this so one tool that i really like to use with layering you don't have to you can just wait for it to dry naturally is a heat tool it's a craft heat tool you can get them on amazon you can get them at craft stores um, i originally got it for embossing and then i just used it to dry my watercolor and i use it a lot when I'm filming my tutorials because it just speeds up everything a lot further. Um, I'm just gonna turn it on and show you, but if it's too loud, you can always turn your volume down for a second. Really doesn't take any time at all. Then I'll go in with another layer. So this is how I also use layering, multiple layers. Okay, do another set of mountains like this. use my heat tool. I won't, I won't have the sound on this time. And then let's do one more set of mountains. I'm making it a little bit darker because always as we get to the foreground, it gets darker. Have some different heights and there you go. Okay, so that's how you can use layering with mountains and landscapes. Um, you could also layer some clouds in there. So I'll just take a little bit of pink, lighten it up a bit. So they're nice sharp clouds. Totally up to you though. You could do this wet on wet, which makes them a little bit more out of focus, or you can do it like this where it's wet on dry for layering. And then it kind of makes it look like it's a bit more in focus, more detailed clouds. Okay, and then lastly, our animals. This is not a great cat, but it's fine. And so like we practiced up here with the fur, you're just doing the same kind of thing. So I'm gonna grab some burnt umber. It's a, not a great cat. And you could just do practice your little fur strokes, maybe around the face. <laughs> do your little dry brush thing that I was talking about. So dry it on your paper towel. Okay, for your animals. I kind of showed you this in the wet on wet video, just a preview of layering. And then with the bird, you can do your little feather strokes. This is how I do the details for the eyes, you know, the beak. This isn't great, but it's fine. I'm not even gonna attempt the face right, oh, should I? Yeah, let's just do it, let's make a little face. <laughs> but that's layering with animals I do have a tutorial on animals either it's already out or it's coming out I don't know um that will go way more into depth than this but that's kind of like the gist of it um lastly I'm just going right back to these flowers another way I use layering or doing wet on dry I'll take my brush put on a little bit of pigment so it's wet not too, too much. And I just like to do these little like detailed lines sometimes on my flowers. And this is, again, it's layering. Okay, just using the tip of my brush and it adds texture to your paintings and detail. Okay, so it's totally up to you how you wanna do it, um, but that's a way. So now that I've showed you all the ways I like to use layering, now we're going to get into a fun little exercise that is, like I just said, fun and relaxing. So let's jump right in. 
Okay, so now that I've shown you the different ways that you can use layering, we're gonna do a fun and relaxing drill that I like to practice, kind of like the wet on wet one, but this time you are gonna be layering, so you're gonna need to allow some drying time. I'm actually gonna just show you just two different, you can do this so many ways. You can do any shapes, colors, whatever you want. Um, but let's just do two different kinds for fun. So the first one is just using shapes. So pick a color palette. I'm gonna use like jewel tones, I think. So like greens and blues and maybe some purples. And I'm just gonna do some shapes. Okay, and the first round of shapes that I'm gonna do, none of them are gonna be touching each other. And this is actually a nice, like, fun abstract piece you could always put in your house. You could do hearts if you wanted to, um, whatever kind of shapes that you want. Okay, then maybe I'll do, let's do like a mauve purple. Again, not touching, okay? Not touching yet. We're just putting down our first layers. Okay, and you can use some of your like your wet on wet techniques to really like add, you know, little bits more color in there if you want. You could really do this any way you want to. Okay. Okay. So while that dries, um, I'm going to show you the other way that we're just going to do like floral layering here because you need to allow drying time for all of this. So I'm just going to wet up my colors. Sometimes it's good to have a spray bottle on hand, to wet them up nice and fast. So let's do some petal shapes. that are not touching each other. And you could do a flower that's, you know, you're looking at from face down perspective, side perspective, different shapes, whatever you like. Uh, let's do maybe like yellow ones. Totally up to you. I'm really just winging these colors here. <laughs> I'm not really planning it out, so you could do a way better job of planning this stuff out. Let's grab some more pink, maybe like a purpley magenta. Okay, you kind of have to plan out where you want flowers to be. You could do buds. Let's grab, I don't know, another pink. Like that, okay. So now allow everything to dry and then we'll come right back and start layering. Okay, everything is dry now, let's get into the layering fun. So pick a color, however you wanna do this. And really you're just gonna start layering shapes on top of other shapes. Okay, however you want to do this. And do it light enough that you see the layers underneath. That's my tip for that. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna grab a different color but you need to make sure you're not touching the layers that you just did that are wet. Okay. I just did blue, right? So I can't touch the blue yet. Okay, and it gives it this really fun, transparent, almost looks like sea glass or something. Okay, 
So there's our first layer and we can start layering once the blue ones dry. Let's do the petals down here. Okay, so sometimes, like I said before, it's fun to layer different colors with the flowers. So I'm gonna do purple petals maybe on this one. Again, try not to get the purple and purple to touch each other. You really wanna see the distinct difference between the layers. I mean, they can be touching a little bit at the bottom if you want. You can grab some darker purple if you want and have it bleed into those. Let's do maybe an orangey one here. We could just do a whole page of florals if you wanted to. Okay. Let's do pink with this one. Fill it in. But it's just such a fun and relaxing activity and it ends up looking so cool. like that. And then once you've figured out, like if you want some stems and leaves, you could do your first round of layers with stems and leaves. You could do that. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay down some of the stems. Like that, and then we'll wait for that to dry and then layer some leaves on top. But our blues look just about dry so now we can do our last layer of these and really you can kind of layer wherever you want and it just looks super cool and this is a really fun activity for kids too it looks so easy and it ends up looking awesome okay so there's that. Let's dry these leaves really quick. If you even wanted to do another round of petals, um, you definitely could just add more petals. Um, but like I said, you can layer the leaves as well. However you want to do this. I maybe even change up the color of the leaves a bit too. And then like we did in our practice, you could always grab a little bit of color and do some of the, the line work. So the, the layering of the textures in your flowers, totally up to you though, you don't have to do it. Like I said, you could add just more layers 
of leaves, leaves, petals. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it also just kind of gives a bit more texture to your flowers. I always have a few lines coming down from the top of the petals too. There you go, you can always do your center here. So that's another layer. And there you go. So that's a really fun and easy and relaxing way to practice your layering. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked them and I hope you enjoyed this series. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for even more. Have a great day, guys. Bye.